Hello everyone, uh, my name is Jeremy Sen, and uh, here is my colleague Colette. So we are going to talk about Bitcoin Q and also where is AT based on PMI. So uh, as Dan mentioned, this is actually a implementation <laughs> that uh, uses PMI protocol and open config modules uh, to show how the whole pipeline works. And I'm actually going to uh, keep my slides this week because I'm going to give you some maybe boring details about how it's implemented and I'll click through some GitHub links to show you some socials. That's what I'm planning to do. Uh, stop me if I'm too boring and what I'm going to show you the actual plan you get. Um, a little bit background about the product. So, stop me. Uh, start is a prototype of a open uh, Wi Fi uh, model in early 2017. Uh, since that time, uh, there are quite some deep developments uh, for both the AI protocol for the RTP implementation and for the open config models. And in the middle of this year, we actually found that it is at a time where we can put all the pieces together and write some software using the uh, library to implement something to show how DMI works. And that is how the Bitcoin uh, to our product come to. Uh, so the key part that we're trying to demonstrate using this implementation is uh, we're going to use DMI, DMI implementation in the Go language. And we're going to use the published open static models for uh, Wi-Fi, including the physical layer, the mic layer, and the system uh, layer, to configure certain parameters related with uh, a Wi-Fi access point. Uh, in this model, we are also going to demonstrate a typical uh, enterprise use case to show a open uh, SSID and a special to uh, one X based uh, authentication SSID. Uh, here is the uh, kind of uh, architecture we had in mind when we were trying to write this. Uh, the main point of the unit is the actual AT we're going to implement that. But in order for the AT to work, we need to have other pieces. But inside AT, we have what we call the DS. Oh, yes, let me do that. So when I need to show the code, I'm going to. Yeah. Ah, that's better. better. Yeah, cool. Okay, so. <laughs> yes. So, inside that particular IP, we have PMI terms. That is uh, in software's term, it's basically a server, the RTP server. Uh, but that I was talking with Mark, and I realized all these technologies are not new at all. Sun actually has a RTP technology like 20 years ago, before I even know what the computer is. Uh, but it's still there because it's good technology. It works across platforms, it can support multiple languages, and especially the RTC is being supported by a whole community and it has language support for Go, for C, for Python, and a lot of other things. Um, so what's running inside is really basically not a RTC server. And we have a huge community that supports uh, the uh, library to translate what we call a protocol buffer definition into the DRTC stuff in transitions. And I'm going to actually link to some of the code there. So the DRTC target will implement the DMI protocol. It's just a normal DRTC uh, implementation. And um, the other two components are AT related. So we manage the interfaces on that uh, small box. For our case, it's just not for, for a type of this can be a unique box. Uh, another component is a host ADT implementation. It basically manages uh, the uh, ATO to one X authentication, manages the physical and mic layer uh, communication. So in that uh, box, we expect it uh, to have at least two interfaces, one wire and one wireless interface. And the other side is a service that uh, that 
we need to have this AP to actually do something. Of course, we need to have the DMI plant, which is a DRC plant, and DMI plant, which is, as some talk about, is the plant that uh, do the provision part for DMI to make certificates into the DNI analysis. And we also have a previous server that will handle the authentic parts. And on the left, that is actually some even upper layer uh, architecture that enterprises or companies may have in their infrastructure already, such as how do I manage my IP address allocation? How do I consume the modern data when I get them? Uh, how do I make sure the IP is don't stack the food on to each other. How do I make sure the heat map works well? So those are not the scope of the actual implementation, but DMI provides very good interface for you to integrate those infrastructure with uh, what we have. But if they also talk about how with each other using the RPG, then you can have a quick move because we can relax. So with that, I'm going to uh, actually uh, that is what it is. Detail about each component. So PMI is going to be used for the uh, baseline provision, DNOI. And for our case, it's going to do the certificate provision and software installation and update. Uh, after that, we are going to handle the um, DNI first. And, uh, there are two main categories for the BMI operation. One is basic configuration, the other one is monitoring. So in the world of operations for that cost, monitoring is a really important component. In the world of BMI, uh, we use this software uh, RPC to do the telemetry data. There are other uh, RPCs, but typically subscribe is what people are before. And between the class and target, there is the upgrade open config model that uh, is being used to carry the data between each other. Uh, I can actually show you the RPCs that were used to speak uh, the. Can you, uh, uh, let me Let's see this. It's better. It's better. This is actually what uh, Dan was showing you last night, but I just linked you to the exact uh, location inside the GitHub where this is actually uh, defined. So if you write your code, and this is the place where this is being maintained by the uh, maintainer of the uh, repo. So this is uh, the site RPC config box. Probably the most uh, commonly used model for you, but a bigger base address, a, a target address. And uh, what you need to do is to put in a RPC request and it gets a response. And I'm going to show you some example of doing that uh, later on. Uh, and in case, it's similar to the sub uh, set model, it's basically the other way around where you can get data from the device into the active controller. So uh, I'm going to talk a little bit more about the target site. So in DMI, target is actually the location where the ERP server resides. That's kind of not very intuitive because target is the actual device. Uh, but in DMI's model, target is uh, where the server relies. That's uh, actually good because you want the server to be running all the time, right? But the plant can come and go. So you could have one plant doing the configuration and the other plant doing the monitor. And uh, on the server side, I actually put some code snippet here. So it's pretty straightforward. It's just like you write any RPC server. Thank you. Sorry. Thank you. Yes. Uh, so the language is Go, but uh, 
GRPX is uh, so called other languages. Um, so the constructor uh, basically takes a model. The model is what is, is being defined by OpenMP. So OpenMP has to be translated into your language implementation. In our case, we have a generator it's called YGraph to generate the open young model into language bindings. In this case, it's Go, and then compile that here. So it is uh, being agreed upon by both the target and the client side. And the model defines the open structure. I can actually show you the basics here. The structure I'm not going to use that too. So for model, uh, this is basically what it has. And uh, it takes both the schema and the actual data. Uh, I'm going to show you the active and big in another slide. And um, here is what we use for the link compute on uh, the server side. So we have a new function from new server. We call a Bible library and create a new model based on our schema. And the server takes the model and also some initial configuration. If you have some defaults you want to set with the server, then you can get it. So on the client side, it's actually much easier. <laughs> I need to automate that so I don't have to. Thanks. So we have some tools to, to do that in the Git repo. Uh, typically, plant side, the other is to configure something. You, you need to have your intent. That intent can be say, generated by people, by human being, or by another kind of infrastructure pipeline. So you're a big company, you don't want to uh, allocate IP addresses by hand by people, right? You may have such an IP address by moments. So you could plug in those infrastructure pieces. What I'm going to show you here is actually a example of the instance to compete. So we are using the IRB JSON format, the speech JSON, and different fields. So the library can deserialize uh, this and validate it, and then it will be sent to the JRC call. Some uh, deep dive of the EMI code generation. So this is actually how we translate the powerful buffer definition, which is the native language where GRC is being defined. Using a tool called HotCGango, that's a general tool to translate powerful buffer definitions into language binding code. In this case, it's Go. If you write in this file fast, if you write in Python, you have um, this actually shows the actual DMI for that mission. I think we just saw this last month. Um, it's pretty concise. It's about uh, 4 300 lines of code. And then we run this, this generator. So it's probably generating into thousands of lines of code. So when talk about uh, networking, I often have video, people asking me, oh, are you guys applying any machine learning or AI or artificial intelligence so kind of funny things? I was always hard to say, but actually I didn't realize that we are going to automate a lot of development work, work. If instead of people writing code, many of those things are right now being done by programs at the same time. And GMI, DRPC, those are good examples for those. So, what we have to deal with in this case is only the powerful buffer definition and the higher level RPC call instead of writing our own code to do our own funding. Uh, next is the open config. So, we talk about when we try to set up a purpose, we have to uh, have a model. Now, how we generate that model? That model is again something that higher level thing that cannot be done using AI or machine learning. 
it has to be written by people because it's more important, but it's pretty consensus. So what we see here is actually the higher the top level open model for this instance here, quite far. About 100 lines of, of code, and at the top it imports the common modules that every vendor or most vendor agree upon. So it can go the physical layer, the map layer, common tabs, and the few boy. But then in our programming model, what we do is um, so I have some other things to, uh, to, to go the vehicle layer back and system models, those are common classes and the last one I'm going to do that speak. So just, just thinking it's probably worth mentioning um, so the open conflict has the concept of like paths. So if for some reason you had something especially magical that it's especially platform specific, uh, if you're going to pull privately then you can do that. Right? So you don't you're not restricted to everything that's in an existing open conflict model. You, you could you could in theory provide like a private path to something. That's true. Yeah, probably with a decent terms. So uh, so in this part that actually shows how we translate the young model into something that we can use in our home. Uh, what we have here is this is a young model. We just uh, solve for the uh view. And again, you use some automatic generator. Then you have a generator so called that you can view and talk. And this is huge. And uh, it's even actually uh, compressed in the middle because there are too many, too many lines of course. Uh, I think what I'm trying to show is that uh, once this model is defined, it is actually pretty straightforward for developers to try to implement this on both the plan side and the target side. Uh, so put all these things together, what we need is um, both the target side and plan side implementation for DRC. We need a model, and for most cases, it's already there. It's being uh, published. Uh, by Google and other companies that are working together. And uh, we have this kind of services. Most of them are existing, be it server, be it server. And what's new here is the blue box. We have the television. Most of these streaming television is based on real time. And then we can have a good configuration and uh, Monitoring infrastructure to support that. There are various access points in this case for enterprise use case. Uh, the next, uh, we're going to actually show our demo. Ready? Right. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please hold on and drop the demo. We can talk more or you can come here to uh, see our demo, please. Hi, uh, I'm Bolai, and uh, I'm going to show a demo to demonstrate how also the basic use case for the LinkedIn and the GNM. So uh, let me first go through the server directory. So here we have two Raspberry Pi devices. Uh, the one on the left, which is uh, this one, is for the LinkedIn to AP. And this is actually as an AP, very AP device. And on the right side, we have another. We have another AP called uh, for the gateway, and uh, that one provides some uh, network infrastructure services like DHCP and radius. And we also have the GMI kind of running on that. Okay, so for the Linux AP demo, we are going to broadcast two 
I call two overlaps, one for the gas network, one for authentic network. So gas network is open, and the authentic network have radius on the back end. And the traffic will go to the uh, WLAN interface on that AP, and uh, before to the uh, Ethernet interface, and uh, goes to the gateway through the Ethernet cable, and uh, eventually forward to the WLAN interface on the gateway side and go to Ethernet. So actually, you guys can connect to that network and uh, show actually works. And uh, on the LinkedIn side, we have the GMI target running. And on the video side, we have the client running. So for this demo, I will manage to all the operations on the client side and use that client to manage the AP device through the GMI. Okay. So here I have two SSH stacking. So the session in above connects to the gateway, and the session below uh, connects to the AP. So currently, there's nothing running on the AP, so AP is not actually AP, it's still a Raspberry Pi. So to start the command, I have some command to here. First, you need to make sure the which library interface you want to use. So this AP have two uh, WLAN. So since we want to broadcast two uh, WLAN on the AP, so we have to have select the one which support that kind. So the WLAN one for that. And uh, this is the command we will use to start the AP agent, which contains the GNMI target. So you have to specify the service case and uh, the WLAN space we want to use. To broadcast the radio signal and what port we want to use for the GNMI service. Okay, so it starts and uh, you can see it's running on the WLAN one and uh, with the Ethernet interface on the Ethernet. And since there are no usage conversion on the this device, so there's no actually no signal or radio be broadcasted. So let me verify that through. Let me verify. Let me verify that through the uh, Mac internal tool. So we don't have any uh, WLAN with the LinkedIn tool inside. Okay. So we, in the demo wheel, I have three commands prepared. Uh, the first thing I want to do is I want to switch the whole configuration to the AP device. So that will convert this Raspberry Pi to an actual working AP. And uh, to do that, I will use the GMI step operation and uh, with the replace mode. Let me copy the line. Okay. So same thing here on the client side, uh, the certificate, certificate is also required. And we also need to specify what's the target uh, IP address and the port number we want to use. And uh, in the replace operation, we need to specify the path of the open computer model. Since now I want to replace everything, I will specify the root path. And uh, the content of that config is in a file called AT config JSON. So I don't show the details here. It's online. You guys can check later. And the words I click. So this will kind of generate a set request message and uh, send to the uh, AP site. Actually, you see the AP actually got received the message. So that model we send to AP. So Jerry just showed that in the previous presentation. And once it received, the backend AP uh, service will read that open config model and uh, configure all the infrastructure on the AP device, like a link to the all these uh, network interfaces, and it also comes with the whole safety to broadcast the radio signals. Maybe, maybe two things are important here. So one is, um, so it's a GMI thing. So, uh, well, so the GN, GNOI, uh, you've skipped the step where you do the original provision. Yeah. So we concentrate on just that part. But the other part is, like, you notice you use the replace uh, command. So again, to so avoid the issue around transactions, to say I'm just replacing the entire number of the entire link at once. 
And if they come, if they took the work for some reason, then you've got to fix the error or just do it again. Yeah. So now if we look at the network, we shall see C2 network. So when is the off network, which is using the LPA2 authentication, and another one is the gap network, which is the open source that can write it. Right here. So you guys can try to connect to these networks. It should have internet access directly. Uh, you guys can try the guest, or they can use a using password, which is online, so you can check later. So as you guys can see, both channels is in channel A. And uh, I just showed the set of the entire configuration, but in the runtime, maybe you don't want to repeat everything, you don't want to change a single property inside the API. So the GNMI have a support for that. That's the second command I want to show, which is update. So in this case, I will try to uh, change the channel of the radio. And uh, that will only change one single value in the open custom model. And uh, that's why I choose the update command. So the command is very similar to the previous one because it's both, they are both set commands. And the only difference is I now currently I use the update operation and I specify the path to the channel and the value of the channel I should fix right now. So it will fix uh, same thing, it will generate the set command. And the set request will receive on the uh, pipe side. And the DC is your config. So this time uh, the pilot so this time the pilot in on the back end will receive the updated model and it will figure out there's no like infrastructure change, there's like VLAN then change. So it will not uh, modify the infrastructure on the pilot only will configure the whole KPP configuration and uh, let's check the new change. So you guys can see uh, that it's on the channel six right now. So this is just very basic use case, and actually you can do the GNMI to match or any branch or any leaf of the open config model on the AP. And on the AP side, the backend agent will read the updated model and do the corresponding change and make the configuration on the AP side. So that's for the stack command. And what if I want to check with actual configuration on the AP directly. So the third command I have right now is the get. So actually we can use the GNMI to do the get and uh, to query the value of the model on certain parts. It can be the more, it can be on the root, it can be on the branch, or it can be on the leaf. So for well, example, here I just query the channel value like this. Step. So it's a uh, the real case. You or just configure the model and you want to check its actual reflection. So same thing here. Uh, I use the GMI get client and specify certain case and uh, specify the target address and support. And the additional thing here, I need to specify the path to the model I want to choose. So here is generate a GMI get request and get a GMI get response. And if in the response is passed by the path, you just call it and the value you have given. So that's the way you can query that. And the GMI also has the like other commands like uh, capacity, and uh, you can also insert model, you can also delete model. So that thing is also here. I just uh, I don't show it in the demo due to the time limit. So everything I show today uh, for the LinkedIn tool and the GNMI is already open source and it's in the GitHub. So you guys can go to the GitHub, it's put slash Google slash LinkedIn tool and the slash Google slash GMSI. And uh, all the source code, including what I showed today in demo, is 
there. You guys can try offline. Oh, and we have a session here. So if you guys have any people and want to see more like the best, you see, you guys can we can help offline. Um, this uh, um, office Wi-Fi and model, uh, uh, Wi-Fi office that we have, model to describe a Wi-Fi installation in the building. Can you talk about the use case for um, that model? Yeah, that's a uh, Wi-Fi office uh, based on the file, right? It's a uh, top layer our uh, open config model we use. Uh, so typically that uh, would be part of the open config. Uh, I think that's still under discussion whether open config standard one provides something on top there that you want to use for the whole model. But the good thing is uh, open config or GMI is pretty flexible in terms of whether you want to replace the whole tree uh, from top to bottom for IRD or you want to a substrate that you want to manipulate like or rate. So even without that, it is still okay. Uh, it's still workable for runners to start implementing that. Um, so maybe uh, one more question that maybe also just yes. But I noticed that you're you're pulling, you're importing uh, open config modules for components that exist within the AP. Is there no agreed open config model for an AP itself? That's right. So we don't have a top level model for AP yet. Okay. So we we, we just like started with one. So like, let's try and make an AP final official price one for AP. And this model is only for AP right now, so we can do that. And then a comment. I definitely think that somebody should advocate for the deployment of this technology at the NATO offices. <laughs> <laughs> Someone else gives the injection. Yeah, that's where the name came from. Uh, it's all over. Sorry. So I think I noticed you were using some uh, Yang support packages for Go right. in, in your implementation. Is there anything that integrates those in with gRPC? Uh, Structures, messages, or anything? How how are you uh, filling the gap between uh, gRPC and Yang? Yeah, so uh, Yang exists as a payload or the model language for gRPC. Uh, gRPC is the transport language. Um, Go actually provides uh, good support for both of them. So uh, what's the GNMI or GNXI um, uh, reference implementation uh, that uh, Sam talked about is actually the kind of guide feeler for the two pages. As we can see, when you try to create a GRC server that supports uh, open the big model, you need to give some two things. Basically, one is the GRC protocol definition. The other one is what's goes inside that platform player, which is a open config model. I, 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 so the code is pretty new. There are maybe still bugs or features that need to be built in, but I think we have the framework there. Some feature I think uh, we were talking about with the uh, open uh, compiler talk yesterday was like open config has default values, right? So you can say why does this AP want to scan the radio space or not scanning. So the default value is saying two. But uh, the library right now doesn't have a good way to expose that. So when you do not specify the scanning field, uh, the Go library will return him or not for you. So you don't know whether they didn't specify or they want to use the default value or not. So these kind of things are still being flagged out. So Please open the box on GitHub. Please join the discussion. 
Sorry to interrupt you, so I just uh, we have a, this opportunity for a group photo. So oh, New Zealand this is not optional. All New Zealand is happy. <laughs> <laughs> but if you'd like to be an honorary New Zealand, you can get the photo too. So um, that's just going to be right outside the building here. Uh, but we can continue the discussion. Just that the photographer's got limited time. So. Okay. Right, right, yes. Please uh, call by afterwards when uh, you're out here, but Boston, thank you.